Welcome back guys, this is the Redstone Scientist here with the first lesson of Mastering Minecraft, a complete course in command blocks. If you guys want to know more about this series, check out the introduction video that I will link to on screen now. I highly recommend seeing that video before you begin this series. Alright, so get your pencil and paper ready, open your textbooks, and let's begin. The prior knowledge required for today's lesson is a basic understanding of Minecraft. If you think you already have a pretty good grasp of redstone, the components of redstone, and game ticks and redstone ticks, then I recommend skipping this lesson. This is probably the only time in the series you'll hear me recommend skipping a lesson. Let's take a look at the vocabulary for today's lesson. We've got quite a lot of it. Redstone dust, signal strength, redstone blocks, redstone torches, buttons, levers, repeaters, game ticks, redstone ticks, and finally, comparators. As you probably already know, redstone is the virtual equivalent of real-world wires and circuits. In today's lesson, we will be reviewing some basic redstone components that will help us out when working with command blocks. Remember, this is not a series on redstone wiring, this is a series on command blocks. But it is important to understand the fundamentals. Let's start out with the basic components of redstone. This is a piece of redstone dust otherwise known as a piece of redstone, or just redstone. It's the heart of all redstone work. The best way to describe it is just wire. As you can see, it connects on all four sides to link up. Redstone dust transmits signals immediately. There are many different properties of redstone that we won't go into right now, but one important thing to mention is redstone power, or more accurately, signal strength. If we power a piece of redstone with a redstone block, this piece of redstone outputs a power of 15. It's the maximum power that redstone can have. If we extend the redstone along here, you can see that each piece of redstone outputs one power lower than the previous, meaning the next one will be 14, the next one will be 13, and so forth, all the way until zero. It's important to note that the different power levels do not have different effects on redstone components or command blocks. This means that a lamp powered by a signal strength of 15 will not shine any brighter than a lamp powered by a signal strength of 1. Instead of thinking of this concept as power, think of it as an indication of how many more blocks our redstone signal can last before it turns off. There are many different ways to power redstone. We already saw one, the redstone block. With some exceptions, most power-giving redstone components output a power of 15, the maximum. The power-giving components include, but are not limited to, redstone blocks, redstone torches, buttons, and levers. Let's talk about repeaters for a moment. Repeaters do exactly what they say. They repeat a redstone signal. To put it more clearly, they extend it. When redstone is fed into a repeater, regardless of the power, the repeater will output a full signal strength of 15. This means that you can use repeaters to use redstone over longer distances. Repeaters also cause a delay from this time it receives a signal to the time it outputs a signal. There are four possible settings. One redstone tick, two redstone ticks, three redstone ticks, and four redstone ticks. You could cycle through these by right-clicking. A game tick and a redstone tick are two different things. There seem to be a lot of confusion over the lengths of these among beginners. To be clear, a redstone tick is supposed to last for exactly one-tenth of a second. A game tick is supposed to last for exactly one-twentieth of a second. Game ticks are the computational cycle that Minecraft runs on. For our purposes, we do not need to delve any deeper into game ticks. The final and possibly most important redstone component we will review today is the comparator. This is the command block's best friend. There are a lot of complex intricacies of comparators that we won't cover today, but there are a few major things to know about comparators. First, a comparator is capable of outputting a redstone signal based on the block that it is connected to. Second, a comparator is capable of comparing two signal strengths, either by seeing which signal is greater or subtracting one from another. Third, a comparator can act like a repeater, but without the signal strength extension. Meaning if a comparator receives an input signal strength of 13, the output of the comparator will also be 13. This allows you to carry redstone current long distances without dampening or raising the power. Fourth, no matter what, a comparator will cause a delay of one redstone tick. 
And fifth and finally, a comparator can output a signal from a command block based on the command's success. Let's review. Redstone dust can have a maximum power of 15. Power dictates how many blocks a signal will carry. Power can be received from things such as redstone blocks, buttons, and levers. Redstone repeaters can reset a line of redstone signal strength to 15, allowing you to travel longer distances. Repeaters will cause a delay of 1 to 4 redstone ticks. Game ticks and redstone ticks are two different things. A game tick is 1 20th of a second, and a redstone tick is 1 10th of a second. Comparators can compare two signal strengths. They can also output the same signal strength that it receives, allowing you to carry a signal you want to save to another location. And finally, comparators have the amazing ability to analyze all sorts of blocks and output a signal based on what is found. The most important of these is the command block. And as for homework today, no homework. Go nuts! Alright class, that's all we have time for today. Please leave a like, a comment, or better yet, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to check out the jam-packed description for more science. See you next time. And of course, thanks for watching.